What up, Giants fans? In today's show, we're going to break down the seven roster cuts that the Giants made this morning. And just to show all these guys some love, because it is a tough day for everyone that made it this far in the NFL just to hear that you aren't going to make the 53-man roster. So let's show those former Giants some love. Like this video. Let's wish them well. Let's hope they can latch on with another roster. You are watching New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We have a loaded show today. The Giants, they've made seven cuts prior to Tuesday's deadline of having to get every single roster across the NFL down to 53 players. But we also have some rumors coming out around Kenny Galladay. Brian Dable said some interesting things following the preseason game yesterday against the Jets revolving around Kenny Galladay. And Adam Schefter is reporting that the Giants have gotten trade inquires on wide receiver Darius Slayton. One more name to watch in a busy week of moves. And we've been talking about Darius Slayton being cut for a while on this team. And it's because his salary went up from 900000 to $2.5 million due to playing time and how, much he, how well he's played after being a fifth-round pick. And that kind of put him in a position for the Giants, at least, on a team that's trying to get under the salary cap into clear cap space. It sounds like the Giants are going to move on from a guy like Darius Slayton, hopefully through a trade so they can get something back of value. Because if you cut him, you save $2.5 million, but you got to sign someone else. So you're really only saving $1.5 million dollars and Brian Dable today in his press conference said Joe Shane is open for business and he was talking about on the trade market as well as the waiver wire and I expect the Giants to be an active team on the waiver wire when the rest of the NFL has to trim their roster just like the Giants from 80 to 53 there's going to be some good players out there and I expect the Giants to pounce but I want to talk a little bit more about Darius Slayton because his rookie season he was a great ball player, 48 receptions, 740 yards, eight touchdowns after being a fifth-round pick out of Auburn. Those weren't the expectations. In his second year, he was solid as well, 50 grabs, 750 yards, 15 yards per catch, three touchdowns, but he started to drop the ball a little bit. In the last two years, 12 drops in this past year, he wasn't that productive of a player. Is Darius Slayton worth being on the roster, $1.5 million? I could say yes, I could say no, but when you look at this wide receiver depth chart, these are the guys that are on the roster as of right now. The Giants, they cut two wide receivers. We'll break that down in a little bit, or you can tell who's been cut by this depth chart. Kudos to you. But Galladay, Shepard, Tony, and Wandale Robinson are all making this roster. I think the Giants keep six or seven wide receivers, meaning guys like Richie James, David Sills, Darius Slayton, Alex Bachman, and Jalen Moore, who just signed with the Giants, are all competing for really three, maybe two roster spots. At the end of the day, I think Darius Slayton is not going to be on the Giants coming into the season. It'll be either be he will be cut or he will be traded. Hopefully a trade, maybe it's just a sixth or a seventh round draft pick, but that's better than nothing. But I want you to take the seat of Joe Shane right now. What would you do with Darius Slayton? Would you keep him? Would you cut him? Would you trade him? Let me know in the comment section right now. Let's get to the cuts. The Giants, they made seven of them today. They still got a lot more cuts to go. We'll get you that guy, get you that video as soon as that information comes out. That's why you subscribe. But Yusuf Corker was probably the most shocking name today that was cut. The undrafted free agent out of Kentucky. I thought he was going to make this roster once he was an undrafted free agent signee by the Giants because this safety depth chart and safety room is thin. Outside of Xavier McKinney and Julian Love, it's really a question mark because Dane Belton, the rookie, has a broken collarbone. Hopefully he'll be ready to go week one or week two. But it sounds like this is going to be the end-all be-all for the safety room. Nate Meters played great in the preseason game yesterday against the Jets, and this staff really likes what Trenton Thompson can bring. So those are going to be your four safeties with Dane Belton hurt, and once he gets back, his playing time is definitely going to go up. And maybe they will then move on from Meters or from Thompson. But hey, here at Giants now, we have a sub battle going on with the Cleveland Browns report. Shout out to Matthew Peterson. Not going to lie, they beat us to 10,000 subscribers. But Giants now is on top, and it's a race to 11,000 subscribers. I'm okay with losing at 10. 
But I don't want to lose the race to 11,000 subscribers. So subscribe to Giants now, just, not just for videos every single day, live shows on Wednesdays, watch parties every single Sunday, but so we can beat the Cleveland Browns report, another channel here at Chat Sports. So subscribe for videos every single day. The Giants also moved off from two offensive linemen, Josh Revis out of Kansas State, and Eric Smith is no longer with the Giants. So two offensive linemen have been cut for the New York Giants, and it's just a numbers game at this point. Revis was fighting an uphill battle, and Eric Smith, honestly, was just a training camp body. I project this to be the starting offensive line come week one if Shane Lemieux is able to get healthy, Andrew Thomas, Lemieux, Lemieux John Feliciano, Mark Lewinsky, and Evan Neal. But there's going to be guys competing like Devery Hamilton and Max Garcia and Jamil Douglas and if Ben Bredesen can get healthy. I want to talk, though, real quickly about what Brian Dable said about Devery Hamilton today. He said he played a lot of plays in that preseason game against the Jets, and he competed really well. He can play tackle. He can play inside. Another smart guy that's doing everything that we ask of him. I think Devery Hamilton is going to make this roster, and he may even start on the interior offensive line come week one if a guy like Shane Lemieux and Ben Bredesen are not able to make a roster spot so or be able to go week one due to injury. So keep your eyes on Devery Hamilton making this roster and being a contributor early on. The Giants, they did let go of kicker Ryan Santoso, a familiar face. He spent a couple years with the Giants, but due to Graham Gano suffering that concussion in the second preseason game against the Cincinnati Bengals, they had to pick up a kicker. For week three of the preseason, they brought a familiar face in, Ryan Santoso, but his time with the Giants once again is coming to a close. Graham Gano sounds like he'll be back week one, suffered that concussion on kickoff, made the tackle, kind of didn't make the tackle, didn't look too good. But that's why you don't want your kickers making tackles. But let's show some love to Graham Gano. In my opinion, a top five kicker in the NFL. And we've coined the nickname on Giants now as cold-blooded Gano. Show, so, so, show some love in the comment section to our guy Graham. Type it right now, cold-blooded Gano. The Giants, they also moved on from Keelan Doss today, a guy that made this roster at a tryout. And that's impressive. And the fact that he made it this far, kudos to him. He made some big plays. They also moved on from Travis Toivonen, a guy that they cut a couple of weeks ago, but brought him back just because the Giants, they played a lot of receivers in yesterday's, yesterday's game. Dable said that all healthy receivers were going to play, and there weren't really that many of them. So with Keelan Doss and Travis Toivonen not on this roster anymore, this is what this wide receiver depth chart's going to look like. We talked about it a second ago, but guys like James Sills, Slayton, Bachman, Jalen Moore are going to be competing for those finals two or three spots. Two guys that I think are directly competing against each other. At this point, there's nothing more they can do. They've done their stuff. The stuff is, and the decisions are now just up to Brian Dable and Joe Shane. But I want to ask you guys this question. I think just one of these guys makes it. I have to go with Richie James, but I think Bachman deserves it. I'll ask you, who makes the roster? Type 81 for Alex Bachman or 80 for Richie James. Here at Giants Now by Chat Sports, we are growing like crazy, and we are growing to platforms that you guys use. We are now posting Giants content every single day over on Rumble. Give us a follow. Rumble.com slash TV. My favorite part about Rumble is you can listen to these videos audio style only. You can close out the fun, uh, your phone, go on a run, and just have the audio playing in your head so you don't have to watch the video. So give us a follow. Show us some love. We're trying to get to 4,000 followers over on Rumble. Rumble.com slash TV. Elijah Griffin, the cornerback that came over from the Buffalo Bills after he was cut when the Bills went down from 85 to 80, has now been cut by the New York Giants. Didn't look too good in a couple of preseason games for the Giants, and this is now what the cornerback depth chart looks like. You got Adoree Jackson as your outside corner number one, Aaron Robinson at cornerback number two with Darnay Holmes. He's clearly won that job this uh, training camp at the slot. Then you have a couple guys I think still will get cut, but it's a battle between Rodarius Williams, Darren Evans, Cordell Flott, Harrison Hand, uh, Ken Dorsey, or Dorsey, excuse, Khalil Dorsey, I don't know why I say Ken Dorsey, and Zion Gilbert. Dorsey got beat yesterday for the game winner. I don't know if he's going to make this roster. Not because of that play, but he has not looked too good with the Giants. Brian Dable also said earlier today that the rest of cuts will come before tomorrow 
Tuesday's practice, 1.45 p.m. Eastern. The Giants, they still got to cut. If my math is right, you add 80 and you subtract 7, you're down to 73. You got to get to 53. There's still going to be about 18, 19, 20 more cuts with some practice squad signees as well as maybe some guys going on injured reserve. We'll keep you guys up to date with that. Subscribe and make sure your notifications on so once that news comes out, you can join us for a video as soon as possible. I also wanted to touch on what Dan Duggan and a couple people said coming out of Giants uh, just meetings today, press conferences. He said, Good news for Gary Brightwell, Cam Brown, and Carter Coughlin. Brian Dable said they place a high premium on players who can contribute in the kicking game. And at the running back spot, between guys like Gary Brightwell, Antonio Williams, and Jay Sean Corbin, that is a vote in the right direction for Brightwell, a guy that didn't play in week two of the preseason. He's in a crowded room, and they're all fighting. I think only two guys between Corbin, Williams, and Brightwell make the roster, and the fact that Brightwell contributes on kickoff as well as punt, that's going to be a vote for him to make this roster. I think at the end of the day, it will just be, though, Corbin. I don't even know. I don't know. I, I could see him keeping two. I could see him, keep, see him keeping three. But I think Williams is the only guy of those three right now that's a lock. They'll debate that over the coming days. I also want to talk about Kenny Galladay before we get on out of here in today's show. Because following yesterday's preseason game, Kenny Galladay was really only the only starter. Like, penciled in, locked to make this roster starter that played. And Jordan Renan talked to Brian Dable about it. And I don't want to make too much of what Dable had to say, but he said, he asked Dable if Kenny Galladay's roster spot is in question, and Dable said, all those receivers are competing. Joe Shane and I will sit back and talk about everything, he said. Galladay played Sunday because Giants played all healthy wide receivers. Dable brought up it's a competitive group. So that got Giants Twitter on fire. And then Jordan Renan had to clear, clear it up a little, but he said the Giants aren't cutting Kenny Galladay. His contract won't allow it. $17.5 million guaranteed this season. Yikes. And $4.5 million next year. But it's a clear, it's clear. Based on usage Sunday, plus overall performance, they're not sure what they can get out of him this year. Crossing fingers, he can turn it on for the regular season. Kenny Galladay has been a disappointment. I don't want to harp on it for too long. But I just wanted to clear the air because a lot of people were asking me, no, the Giants are not going to cut Kenny Galladay. But I'll let you take the seat of Joe Shane and be the GM of the Giants. Should they cut Kenny Galladay? It's been a disappointing tenure for him so far. Type Y for yes, type N for no. And I want to say thank you, and I appreciate you if you made it this far in today's video. And if you did, that makes you a real one. So type a real one in the comment section to let me know you made it this far in the show, and we'll see you later on the next Giants Now.